Hey, Sider Crusaders. On my radio show yesterday, and I'm sure you've heard uh, many of these stories as well, we share stories of uh, Afghans who have helped America and Americans uh, for many years. And, and by the way, we were there to help them. They helped us. We helped each other, <laughs> right? Um, but what they did and, and how we uh, left them behind, I'm on the side that they deserve to be vetted properly and to come to America, or at least we can work with neighboring countries in Afghanistan, of Afghanistan, to send them to Uzbekistan or whatever. Right? We owe them at least that to get them out of harm's way. But from their perspective, it's just betrayal. The Afghans were betrayed, and betrayal is the worst thing there is. It's the lowest pit of hell in Dante's Inferno. And the stories are horrific now. And because of Biden's bumbling exit, there's only one way out. It's the airport. And we're, we're bragging, I guess, now that we control the airport, but the Taliban controls every way to get to the airport. The State Department sent out this memo saying, hey, if, if, you're, if you have a ticket or whatever, you have a visa and you can go, get to the airport. But then the last line of the memo is like, oh, by the way, good luck. The last line there. We cannot guarantee your security as you make your trip. What? I thought that was a I thought that was fake when I first saw. So, this is the national security advisor. This is our national security advisor uh, when asked about our effort, not even just to get Afghans out, but to get Americans. Here's what he said. Is that mission is right? not complete by August 31st, and there are Americans and Afghan allies who remain there. Will U.S. troops stay until everyone is out, or will they leave? So I'm not going to comment on hypotheticals. What I'm going to do is stay focused on the task at hand, which is getting as many people out as rapidly as possible, and we will take that day by day. So you can't commit to bringing back every American to Hypothetical. Getting every American out is a... Hypothetical. At least the British version of him said, we won't. They said, we're going to try, but we're not going to. It won't happen. At least he was honest. But how about the fact that bringing back, I'm this is, again, I, I know I started off the segment talking about Afghans. This is bringing, about every, bring, bringing back every American. It's like, ah. They said something the other day, our White House did that, oh, the Taliban has assured us that they're going to let Americans get to the airport. Oh, great, we're, we're operating on Taliban assurance. And the ones, of course, who don't make it are going to be killed. They're dead. Shot in the head. Shot in the head if they're lucky. Probably hung in the middle of the town or burned alive. We can't imagine it. We have, we have no place for this in our brain. <laughs> right? That's why we, it doesn't... Like, people are scared of the virus. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? People scared of a virus with a 99.99% survival rate? Imagine living in fear of having a 100% chance of getting your head cut off if someone in the Taliban sees you. We can't, we, uh, we don't, we're not even close, we're not like light years away from understanding that fear and that terror that would grip you and that desperation that you would have. We, we've, we've no, no one is any close, to, any, any idea close to what that's, what that's like. I want to share this here in, in, a, in a tweet I saw that just has too much snark for me to even handle. This first tweet, it was in response to this tweet. This tweet is from a woman. Uh, she is a national security fellow at the Institute for the Study of War. She's an associate fellow at the International Center for the Study of Radicalization. And she's a visiting fellow at the National Security Institute. So she's a senior fellow, an associate fellow, and a visiting fellow. And listen, I'm sure she's a very nice person. And as, after perusing her Twitter, her and I probably agree on lots of different things. And this is not an attack on her. It's an attack on her profession. <laughs> and in this tweet, I don't think she's talking about veterans either. Of course, veterans have a lot of pain. We talked about that on the radio show as well. I think she's talking to her fellow national security fellows and visiting fellows and senior fellows and associate fellows. Here's what she said. She said, uh, it's a very dark day in Afghanistan. Take care of yourself. Not veterans, not people in Afghanistan, people in DC. It might require avoiding the news. Even that could be excruciating, I know. We can and should bear witness. But it does not require self-harm. Triggering PTSD symptoms or new trauma does not help the Afghans. What? And someone wrote back, ah, yes, with the chaos engulfing the people of Afghanistan, I too would like to extend my 
warmest and most heartfelt well wishes to the senior fellows and visiting scholars who are suffering through this very difficult time. No one on earth can imagine what you must be going through, but you are seen. I'm dripping with car sarcasm. I hope that comes through. This woman's experienced nothing. No, 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 again, I want to pick on her. The visiting fellows, the senior fellows at the think tanks in D.C. over the last 20 years, they've experienced nothing compared to our veterans or compared to the Afghans who we've left behind. Jesse Kelly, he says, wait until you find out that they, the elites, they're not embarrassed by anything. They're not doing some honest self-assessment right now. They're not, they're just figuring out how to navigate 72 hours of bad press. That's their top priority. No one's gonna be fired. No visiting fellow will consider a career change. None of them are gonna say, geez, you know what? Wow, I've been so wrong about everything. Maybe this just isn't the job for me. No general will step down. Nothing will change. Just people will talk about their mental health and then get a paycheck in the mail on Friday. They'll be fine. And we'll still go nation build again. And we won't learn a single lesson from this. The elites won't because they paid no price. They pretend to pay a price. And that's what that tweet was. They pretend to pay a price. Let's talk about oh, how excruciating this is to watch. Not to live, to watch. That's the key. Because first of all, these people in Afghanistan and the, the citizens, American citizens in Afghanistan, they're not tweeting. They're busy, living, trying to not die. Right? But it is excruciating to watch from the safe distance of Washington, D.C. So uh, be careful for your PTSD ladies. Uh, you have no idea. You're not cowering in fear in your home, waiting for someone to knock at the door to shoot you in the head. Give me a break. An Afghan vet wrote about uh, an Afghan interpreter that he knew who was hung in the street last night. They melted his DOD, his Department of Defense ID, into his chest, cut off his arms, killed his family, and his 10-year-old daughter was spared and handed off to Taliban leadership. And spared means her life is going to be worse than death, perhaps. The people in D.C. will be fine. They'll pretend to be distraught. Their paycheck will come just the same. They have nice food, nice apartment, and nothing in their life will change. It's just like COVID. Nothing in their life has changed. So it'll never end. We're going to do it all over again. Wow. That was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.